<clears throat> All right, welcome. So today I'm here to just talk a little bit about the reasons why I personally did not enjoy as much as I was waiting for it. I was so excited. I even watched the preview release that they had on uh, HBO Max. Uh, which was like 30 minutes of introducing all the cast and you see people on live stream ha having questions even you know original wonder woman showing up like amazing everything was so great i still didn't enjoy the movie i, I had so much expectation maybe my expectations were way too high maybe the previous movie just had so much to give like they did such an amazing job with the first movie that I was expecting so much more than what they actually gave us. And what is my fault or the fault of, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and start the movie. And as you guys can see, I am paying for the movie. I am not pirating it. It's not a pirated version. I'm not going to stream it the whole time for you guys so you can watch it through my feed. So HBO, WB, all these guys, all your, you know, $1,000 an hour lawyers can get off my case and move on because this is just a quick skipping through the movies to talk about why I didn't personally enjoy it and why I feel like you guys could have done better. And also I have a really important question at the end that maybe you guys can help answer that I may not know yet. So get off my case. I'm not trying to pirate your movie, which would be pretty funny because technically I'm Haitian. So if I was to try to pirate your movie, I would be Pirate of the Caribbean. Hello. Whoa, 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 Raul. No one ever said that Basuka could sink a cruise ship. <laughs> you want to take out a cruise ship? I can sell you something to take out a cruise ship, you kook. <laughs> okay, I'll see you in Kiev. Sorry, where were we? So, right here, kudos for using the same girl actress as her youngest self as you guys did the first movie. Really good on that part. Because sometimes on a sequel, um, either contract fell through or the actress may be tied up with other projects and they don't use the same actress and that really, you know, just throws everything off. So, so far, so good you guys are using that well. Kudos for that. Um, and this scene looks, reminds me so much of Thor. And Thor is my other favorite movie. Like, I have, the, I have two different set of hammers. Now, in the last movie, they show you a little bit about her past, but she kind of grew up very quickly. They showed you, like, two or three scenes of her growing up, um, and then, boom, she was on the field training and, you know, full-size person kicking ass and taking names and all that. Um, so I'm really happy that they're bringing it back, showing you a little bit about more of her childhood uh, training exercise and seeing more of the tradition of her world because we don't really know too much about her world. So I feel like each movie will give you a little bit more about her and her world, which is really awesome. So I'm really glad they did that. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Patty Jenkins. Thank you. Now, I gotta say, before I watched this movie, because I know it was coming out on the 24th, 25th of December, and I wanted to watch it so bad, but I had to make sure that everybody in the household were available to watch it because everybody wanted to watch it. So what I did to keep myself busy until then is I rewatched the old one, like twice. And again, it just fueled that uh, intensity even more and I just couldn't wait to watch it I just was I was just on the edge of my seat when it was time to watch it I had my chair laid out movies out on the big screen surround sound blasting I just wanted to take it all in because I was waiting so much for that movie um, I am again I'm an avid Marvel fan uh, I know there's a lot of people that you know you either Marvel or DC Comics I uh, love Marvel movies however Wonder Woman, the first one the, in 2017, did it for me. Like, that was, like, I know Gal Gadot from uh, Fast and Furious also. I used to watch every single Fast and Furious movie there ever was. And then Hobbs and Shaw and all those things. So I knew her from then. Even though I'm pretty sure she's probably done other movies, that was my um, introduction to her as an actress. Uh, I'm sorry if uh, I don't realize, you know, all the other movies that she's done. Anyways past that. So I love her. And very recently, I decided to start learning how to 
uh, speak Hebrew, find out that she's Israeli. So she speaks Hebrew. So at some point, I hope, praying for it, that God please, that we meet and we can speak Hebrew with, to each other. That, that would be just, that, that, that. Beside that, let's keep going. My thing here is not to explain to you why maybe they spent so much time on these characters versus the actual story uh, based on either what they've done or who they are or whatever it is. That is not important because at the end of the day, if the person watching the movie doesn't know any of those characters from any past or thing that they've done, if they're not playing the part, if they're not playing the role well enough, then they did not need to be there. They did not need to have that much screen time. The scene dragged on too damn long. You see how painful that was for you to listen to me just saying that? Now, imagine watching the movie. Um, and for me, the first thing that I thought about when that happened is that who was the editor? Now, my brother-in-law, who is way more involved in movies, said, no, it's not the editor. It would be the director. So, since the movie was already not going so great, I was like, well, I got nothing to lose but to find out. So, I decided I'll do that. So, I go on here and I say, Wonder Woman 1984 director. Boom, that comes up, Patty Jenkins. Okay, so I was like, okay, Wonder Woman 2017. Da, da, da. Patty Jenkins as well. Okay, so I give him the benefit of the doubt that he knows better than I do, and he said, no, it was the director. So I was like, okay, so I checked it. The same director, first one and second one. So I was like, well, I've got nothing to lose. Who was the editor for both movies? So I did the same thing. Wonder Woman 1984 editor. And I get Richard Pearson. I have no idea who that is. So, of course, I'm going to find out. Richard Pearson, IMDB. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay, he's known for Godzilla, Justice League, King Kong, The Accountant, really good movie. Maleficent, really, really good movie. Red Dawn, Safe House, love that movie. Iron Man 2, amazing. Okay, so he did a lot, a lot of good movies. So, Wonder Woman 1984 is Richard Pearson. Patty Jenkins directed both movies. So, who edited the first movie? Wonder Woman 2017 editor. Martin Walsh. Why would a movie that did so great with everything that they had, why would they change anything, especially the editor? Because Martin Walsh, which, again, I am IMDB, I'll do just as much work as you can do for yourself and see what I'm talking about. So Martin Walsh edited the first one, did not edit the second one. Martin Walsh is known for Chicago in 2002, V for Vendetta, Wonder Woman, of course, um, Silent Night, Justice League. Uh, Cinderella, Jack Ryan, f really good movie. Um, Separate Lives, Thunderbird, Chicago, Iris, Strictly, Sinatra. So, my thing is, why did they switch editor from the first movie to the second? Now, there is a thing that I've heard in Hollywood that certain actors, 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 and actresses, they don't do sequel movies. Uh, First and foremost is Meryl Streep. She's an amazing, wonderful, like, actress. However, what I've heard is that 
she does not do sequel. Like she'll do the original version of the movie, and she'll do some of the some of the movies that you wouldn't really, you wouldn't imagine she would do. But she would do the first one, but she won't do sequels. Um, I mean, there probably is a list of things that she has done sequels to. Maybe there's a that was a time in her life that she's not there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe Martin Walsh only does you know original movies. He doesn't do sequels. He doesn't do part two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, because here, yeah, he did Iron Man 2, but that's the only Iron Man. I don't see Iron Man 1, 2, 3, or any other, you know, um, of the Iron Man movies. So maybe that's just his thing. Uh, but I would love to find out more of what happened there, what happened. So, because the scenes just, they just drag. And the stories, I understand. The story of the girl finding herself, finding her strength, finding her inner beauty and all that. It need, it's a story that needed to be told. I understand it. But the, it just... <sighs> and then the other story of the guy that, you know, or um, some, this oil oligarch that lied to all his investors and, could never, and wasn't really looking for oil because he was looking for that gem. Um, his son, he disappointed so much. All of his, the story need to be said but why do i feel like the movie was about those two the girl finding herself and the father you know figure out how to show his son that he's not a failure like those stories i've heard them before and yes they probably need to be told more but it just could have been edited much much better again editing editing i mean for some reason i thought because i recently watched um during the pandemic back in August, I believe. And it's all about how much power editors have and how the story is told. And what it told me, which I valued editors even more, is that they are not allowed on set because the editor's choice, editor's um, responsibility is to tell the story in the most attractive, engaging way possible. Now, the director can be biased because maybe this scene was the most complex one to shoot. Maybe it was the most difficult for whatever reason. Maybe a water main broke out. Maybe she had to go through some X, Y, and Z thing and she could be biased because it took so much work to get it that she want to make sure it makes the end of the film. But that does not mean that it needs to. That doesn't mean that it supports the story or it helps the story in any way. So that I understand. Versus the editor is not allowed on set for that particular reason, because they need to be able to unbiased judgment on is the scene fit? Does the scene support the story? Does the scene move the story forward? Does it engage? Does, because otherwise, yes, it just, you know, everybody just throwing things and like literally as we're watching the movie, uh, my brother-in-law was like, why is there so many deleted scenes in this movie? Like 40 minutes in, we're still like, what is happening? The opening scene was phenomenal. I love everything about it. Because the last one, they showed you a little bit about her background, but it wasn't, they didn't go into too much detail because it was like five minutes and then boom, she was full on grown person, kicking ass, taking name, blah, blah, which was amazing. But this part, they showed a little bit more about their culture, about their world, about what, you know, how they, the process they go through, which is phenomenal. Um, but yeah, after that, all the scenes on Earth, what the fuck happened? Oh. If somebody has some answers, please, I would love to know. Send me a link. I will read the whole article. I will find out. Tell me who to talk to. I would love to find out because that was, I mean, I was waiting so much. Like, I am an avid Marvel fan. But if you were to ask me between Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman, which one I would pick? Eight out of ten times I would pick Wonder Woman. I know some of you are gonna say I'm a traitor, but that's how good that last movie was. And I'm not saying that, you know, a superhero movie just need to be, you know, fighting here, fighting there, high interact like this it could have a story. I mean, the first Wonder Woman had a lot of stories, but this one was just, the stories were just, I don't know. Maybe I just need to go all the way back to the writers. But again, it doesn't matter how horrible the writing was. If you edit it properly, put the composition in the right place, right order, 
you can still have an interesting um, final cut. My passion is to be a director and producer, so I will not be, you know, sacrificing the lack of experience I have to judge someone who's been actually already in Hollywood making movies. However, I believe because I've acted, I've done commercials, I've been on both sides of the lens, I see what goes you know, behind the scene to make sure that the scene looks right and the continuity of things happens in a linear way, that when I'm watching a show or a movie or whatever it is, even a commercial, I understand more than just what I'm seeing on the screen. I can appreciate and see what went into creating that aspect of the film or the commercial or whatever it is. So when I watch a movie like Wonder Woman, especially a movie that I so love the first one and I am an avid Marvel fan. I know um, MCU and DCU are not the same thing. A lot of people, you know, it's like a, a battle. Are you a DCU fan or MCU fan? Whatever it is, they they make great stuff. I also know that when it comes to budget, uh, Marvel has a little bit more, you know, in the pocket than uh, uh, DC Comics have, but nevertheless, they still um, show us, you know, they still make our heroes come to reality. In which case, hats off to both of you guys.